Things are not looking too good right now for Instant Brands, the company behind Instant Pot, and their ability to pay back the debts that they owe to their creditors has seriously started to come into question. And I wanted to share this bit of quite concerning news with all of you. Now, this is coming hot off the heels of a report at the beginning of March from Moody's Investor Service. And Moody's Investor Service is a bond credit rating agency. And what they do is they assess the risk factors associated with companies as it pertains to securities and bonds, and they determine their credit worthiness. So, you know, kind of like how you and I have credit scores, this is somewhat kind of the same thing, except is dealing with companies. And I'm going to show you this report that they made where they really pull no punches when it comes to what's going on over at Instant Brands. So this report is basically saying how they've downgraded Instant Brands rating and they have given it a new negative outlook that's even more negative than the last time they ran this kind of report. And some of the things that they say here is really concerning. For example, here in the second paragraph, it says today's ratings downgrade and negative outlook reflects Instant Brands' unsustainable capital structure and the elevated risk of default, including the potential potential for a distressed exchange over the next 12 to 18 months. We expect that demand and industry headwinds will persist in 2023, and the company has limited financial flexibility to navigate a challenging operating environment given its high financial leverage and constrained liquidity. So over in this next paragraph, things don't get any better as they say that they had lower operating results through the first nine months of 2022 with year over year revenue declining by 15.8% and company adjusted EBITDA lower by 38%. And what that basically stands for is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And that was down by 38%. And they also go on to say that they were able to reduce the amount of inventory that they had due to some proactive actions taken by management, but still due to competition and coronavirus lockdowns in China, it didn't make things any better for the company. And it gets even worse when they say Instant Brands' capital structure is unsustainable at current earnings levels and its liquidity is constrained by large borrowings under its $250 million asset-based lending revolver due in 2025. And they went and talked about some things that Instant Brands did in order to improve its liquidity, but still... Moody's views the company's capital structure as unsustainable, absent a meaningful improvement of operating results in 2023, persistently high inflation and weakening macroeconomic conditions. We all feel that, right? Are, pres are pressuring consumer discretionary spending, which will make it challenging for the company to meaningfully improve revenue, earnings, and cash flows. So what they've started to do is downgrade the credit worthiness of instant brands and it tells you down here what it's downgraded instant brands as credit rating to and then just to show you what the ratings actually mean right here it has their corporate family rating which is like a long-term thing downgraded to caa2 from b3 and uh, Wikipedia has a nice little chart to let you know exactly what that means. So it was right here at this point for long term B3, which put it in the category of highly speculative. And now it's gone all the way down to the CAA2, which puts it in an extremely speculative position to repay their debts, which is really, really quite bad. And if you look at the probability of default rating downgraded to CAA2 PD from B3 PD with the PD basically standing for probability of default. We can see right here from Moody's documentation that obligations rated CAA are judged to be speculative of, of poor standing and are subject to very high credit risk. So basically all of this means that Instant Brands needs to do a really really substantial turnaround and they need to do it relatively soon if they hope to stay afloat. So what does this mean for you and me? Well, from a financial standpoint, not much, 
but it could mean that if instant brands goes out of business, then those instant pot products just might disappear from store shelves. Now, there's always the possibility of some other company coming in and buying that particular brand name and still selling the instant pot brand because it has a lot of good name recognition to it. But that also means that you don't really know how the quality of those products can be in the future when another company has its hands in it, especially if they're only really interested in the brand recognition and they might start taking a back seat when it comes to the quality of the product overall. But Instant Brands is currently working on some new designs in order to drum up some more business and attract some more customers and time will tell whether or not that's going to be good enough to save them. But what I want to know from you guys is what's your experience been lately with the Instant Pots and the Instant Brands in particular. I don't own any of those products, so I can't really speak on their quality. But I do want to know if you have a long-term relationship with these products. How has the quality been over the years? Has it been the same? Has the quality been going down? Has it been going up? Or do you even feel the need to buy multiples of those products? That might also be an issue once you have one Instant Pot. How long is it going to take before you decide to buy another one? So these are all questions that eventually are going to be answered. And I'm going to keep my eye on what's going on over at Instant Brand so that we can have a nice little heads up if things do not go as expected. And if things do take a turn for the worst and the company does start to go under, then that could result in some possible deals on instant pot products uh, it's unfortunate that you know it'll also result in a lot of job losses and stuff but from a consumer perspective that would be something that we may be able to look out for in the future so i'll keep my eyes open and i'll let you guys know so that's all for now Till next time i'm jeremy i'll talk to you later